This talk is sponsored by Radical. Radical is a peer-to-peer -peer stack for building software together. Built on protocols instead of platforms, Radical provides creators with a secure and uncensorable code infrastructure, tools for collective code governance, and new ways to earn for open source work. Learn more at radical.xyz. Hi everyone, welcome to Connect Wallet does not equal sign in. Excited to have this time at Web3Con to chat about how we can replace Web2 auth methods and providers with Web3 Connect Wallet. And we'll also talk about some common misconceptions and how to build secure, rich Web3 apps this way. But first, before we get started, GM. I'm Tom, I'm the front-end lead at Mirror, which is a Web3 publishing platform. I'm also the author of WagMe, which is a React Hooks library for Ethereum. And you can find me in various places at Aqua. So let's start again here. We have a humble connect wallet button. It stands for the promise of building new systems, um, decentralized ownership, owning your own data, all these great things. It's probably one of the first things you do when building a new Web3 app is you set this up. Uh, it's up against the existing system of doing things, auth methods that people are used to using, things like connecting email, and then these social providers, Google, Facebook, Apple. These are pretty easy. They allow people to build web apps, they've been used for a long time. And how do we how do we get people to feel good about this, if not better, um, about using Connect Wallet? So let's talk about Connect Wallet from first principles. So what is it? An app requests access to a wallet. You select the Connect Wallet button. What happens next is user can approve or reject that request in your browser extension or your mobile wallet app. Once it's approved, the app opens up a connection with that wallet. And this is really important because once a wallet is connected, an app can make further requests and interact with the network. Either things like creating signatures, sending transactions, interacting with contracts, minting NFTs, swapping tokens on Uniswap, things like that. But if we're comparing this to the standard of Web2 methods, um, it falls a little bit short. It doesn't necessarily do everything that we need on our own, particularly authentication, am I, am, am I who I say I am, like identity and authorization, do I have like permission and access to do certain things. So outside of building like a really simple uh, Web3 app, Connect Wallet falls a little short. Um, anyone can spoof an address, so you can't necessarily verify identity with Connect Wallet alone. And similarly, you can't necessarily give people access to store um, and access like sensitive data based on uh, a Connect Wallet thing. We don't necessarily know if someone is operating and has the permissions to do exactly what they should based on the wall being connected. So that brings us to an evolution, which maybe you've seen before, is you connect your wallet to a Web3 app, and then you're asked to sign this message. And the message is usually text, and it says something like, please sign this message to connect to Mirror. And so you sign it. Um, and sort of like, what is this, again, from first principles? Well, again, you connect your wallet, you sign the message uh, cryptographically. Usually this is personal sign method, so it shows up as text in your wallet. It's a provider, it's like easy to read um, and see what it's doing. And then like once you sign the message, the app will verify that the signature is valid. It will take the, si the signature and the message and check to see that the recovered address is the same as the wallet connection. So why is this interesting? Well, it's to prove ownership uh, of a wallet or like the private keys that exist within the wallet. You know that this person is who they say they are 
And then what's cool is this can extend now to other primitives, which is like once you know that this person controls this wallet, then it's like you can check to see do they control this token or this NFT. Um, interesting things like that. So when comparing to, again, our Web2 uh, methods, this doesn't necessarily make it on its own. It's a little bit better than Connect Wallet. We're able to verify identity now, um, but we can't necessarily like store and access data based on this. Um, we don't necessarily know that uh, it's not it doesn't it's not resistant to things like replay attacks, where it's like you take that text message where it's like I want to connect to my wallet or sign in to X Y Z site. An attacker could do the same thing because um, it's not unique. They could fish you. You could they could get you to go to a website that looks like the one that you want to go to, like OpenSea, for example, and then just get you to sign the same message that they have. And then once once you've signed that, then they can use that on uh, sites that have the same message to interact on your behalf. So as an evolution here is something called signing with Ethereum. And so maybe you've seen what this is, but it's pretty similar to the combination of Connect Wallet and um, personal sign that we saw before. Here, you do a personal sign with a little bit different message. So instead of it being just a plain text message, we try to add in some structured, unique data in here. So you see we'll have things like the origin, URI, where the message is getting signed. Um, and then like that matches up with the, the site that you're on at that moment. Maybe things like the Ethereum network, the chain ID that you're connecting to, a unique nonce which prevents and makes it resistant from replay attacks. And then there could be some other fields too, like when the message was issued, when it should expire, these type of things. And so let's talk about this real quick, again, from first principles to understand it some more. So it looks pretty similar to signing the message. Um, you connect a wallet, at this step, you sign a message, but instead of it just being a, a plain message, you're signing this standardized sign in with Ethereum message, with, which has some unique information and fields in it. Once the message is verified, what you could do is add it to a session or like con confirm the message in middleware. This is if you have like an API and you're building like a rich Web3 app with some off-chain data like user preferences that you want to access. So it's like you have a persistent session. So why is this interesting, important? Well, it's just to standardize uh, message signing across um, certain fields and data with this EIP 4361 um, standard, um, which lays out uh, how a message should be formatted, uh, what information it should have, and how to make sure you're validating it and uh, doing secure things with it. And this is really cool because not only does it have a standard that everyone can use, but instead of using personal sign, which we've done in the past, we can switch to uh, signing type data instead. And you could imagine wallet providers having like a really nice UI presentation for that. So in MetaMask or Rainbow or another wallet provider, instead of there being a text message that you read, it just says like, would you like to sign into mirror.xyz um, maybe there's a button to view more details if you want to like inspect the message um, and then it has like a like a cancel or sign in button in the bottom of it um, and then alternatively if you're not on the correct origin or the wallet provider suspects that there's something malicious it can also show like a typed uh, like prompt with like some info about like, hey, like this is probably spam or like danger, something bad could happen if you sign this. Basically just having a standard allows everyone to align and 
show better interface or better in product experiences for Web3. The other thing that's really cool is this allows us to keep track of sessions. Um, once the message is signed, we can validate it uh, across origin, like you, like website address, but then also um, using like expiration too. So like you know we can check to see if the message is expired. In the future, this could also be used to like grant granular permissions to apps. So maybe you're only allowed to request their balance or some specific information that is stored um, in like a vault somewhere. So we're comparing this to the Web2 methods that we talked about earlier. This does a really good job. It allows us to verify the identity just like signing messages does. It also allows us to securely store and access data. We can create sessions. Um, we can make sure that users are able to only access their information. They're able to securely store on the information that's persisted across like sessions. They can come back, refresh the page, and still be able to access it. So this this like this does it. Everyone should implement sign with Ethereum, um, and yeah, it allows us to like create rich, secure web apps, building on like these principles, like connecting a wallet and signing a message, which is really cool. This means that you know instead of using um, email login or like a social auth provider or even something like Auth0, you can just use this one connect wallet, sign in with Ethereum flow and users can feel good that it's secure and they're getting consistent experience across Web3. Um, they know that sign in with Ethereum is a thing that works well on Mirror, like a publishing platform or an NFT marketplace or like a decentralized finance um, front end, all these places it can it can work the same. So yeah, just to quickly review, Connect Wallet is all about giving access to an app to make more requests, um, to send transactions, sign messages, those type of interactions. Signing a message is all about proving you own the private keys, you are who you say you are. Um, and sign with Ethereum is about standardized secure access building on top of the two. So if you want to go a little bit further, um, uh, Wagme, which is the library, ReactWorks library for Ethereum, has guides for each one of these things. Connecting wallet, signing message, signing with Ethereum. Um, so you can check that out and sort of play around with it and see, see how these things work. Um, also, it can be really good for Hackathon if you want to get started, you're familiar, comfortable uh, using React. Um, you can start using these methods uh, in like a quick start type of way. So yeah, that, that's about it. We're going to make it. We just have to make sure that we're building secure experiences for our people uh, using the apps that we build. Thanks so much for listening and you can find me at these places. See ya.